Let's talk about Doptelit, a treatment for thrombocytopenia in adult patients with chronic ITP, when other treatments just haven't worked well enough. Ah, thanks for tuning in. My name is Barry, and today we're going to learn about who Doptelit may work for in Dop Tell It Like It Is. <laughs> Yes, I'm here today with Dr. Van Dorn and nurse practitioner Stephanie Johnston. And today we're going to hear from a real Doptelet patient named Tammy. I'm Tammy and I live in Washington State and I'm a teacher and I have had ITP for 15 years now. So there's many different options out there. So you just have to try to find the one that, well, one that works best for you, but then also that fits with your lifestyle. When I went in to talk to my doctor about Doptelet, um, she, she knew all about it. She's very informed about all the different medications out there that are options for those of us with ITP. And so we talked about the side effects, headache, bruising, tiredness, things like that, and um, also how to take it, and which was great because I could take it whatever time of day I wanted, whatever worked best for me, and with whatever food. I still need to take Doptelet with food, but I don't have to track the ingredients and you know plan around what I eat because I can take it with whatever food I want. What did you two think about that first part of the story that she shared? Well, it was a compelling story, and I would like to hear more from Tammy why Doptelet works for her. Yeah, she's great. I'd love to ask her what makes Doptelet such a great fit for her schedule. Well, hold on to your seats, because we've got a surprise. Tammy is here with us. Right over here. Come on out, Tammy. Yes! Tammy, so nice to see you. You too, Barry. Now that you're actually here, I'd love for you to dive a little deeper into your treatment experience and let Dr. Van Dorn and Stephanie pick your brain. Not literally, though. That's not their specialty. Absolutely. I'm an open book. Dr. Van Dorn? I was actually telling Barry earlier that I'm curious to hear about previous treatments you've been on. Yeah, of course. I started on IVIG and steroid treatment when I was first diagnosed to get my platelet count up, and I've tried injections and other pills since then. I know Stephanie also had a question about other treatments working with your schedule. Yeah, I'd love to hear how previous treatments affected your schedule, Tammy. Sure. The injections were time consuming because I had to go to the hospital every week to get them, so I had to plan around those weekly visits. And the pills restricted what I could eat around the time I had to take my medication, like dairy. Wait, hold on, what do you mean? Like you can't have ice cream whenever you want? That's, that's the whole point of ice cream. Wait, so does that mean that you would have to advise your patients to limit dairy in their coffee? Unfortunately, it could. Does that? change your mind about treatment considerations, Dr. Van Dorn. Well, when it comes to treating my patients with chronic ITP, diet is important, but my primary focus is on getting their platelet counts up. Fair, but tough. Stephanie, do you agree? I like to know that my patients are happy with both their treatment and their daily life. I believe it's important to ask my patients about their lifestyle and learn what's important to them. If you don't mind me jumping in here, besides not being able to eat ice cream on previous treatments, how did they affect your platelet counts, Tammy? They did help my counts for a while, but after some time, my doctor said my platelet counts weren't quite where they should be. We talked, we decided to look for another option that might help me reach my treatment goals. When I started on Doptelet, my doctor actually called my count steady, which was great to hear. So you're going steady with Doptelet. <laughs> oh no, I'm kidding, I would never. <laughs> Now you can take treatments while eating cheeseburgers and charcuterie boards and broccoli cheddar soup. And, <laughs> and easy you know, maybe a kale salad and some other healthy foods too. Eating a healthy, balanced diet is important. Absolutely, Dr. Van Dorn. I was letting my stomach do all of the talking there. <laughs> you be quiet. <laughs> well, I still have one last question to ask before we wrap this up. Tammy, can you share how you started the conversation around Doptelet with your doctor? Sure. Going into that conversation, I trusted my doctor's expertise on treatments, and she respected that I wanted a treatment that was flexible. What do we think? I think that's a great way to go about finding your treatment fit. That's how I like to work with my patients as well. We'll go through all the different treatment options, how to take them, and discuss the side effects. For example, I like to make sure my patients know serious events like blood clots have occurred on Doptelet, and that its most common side effects include headache, fatigue, 
contusion, epistaxis, upper respiratory tract infection, arthralgia, gingival bleeding, petechiae, and nasopharyngitis. And then we come to a decision together about what will help the patient and fit their personal preferences. Definitely. There's nothing like shared decision making that leads to setting and potentially reaching treatment goals. One of my goals is to be as honest and optimistic as you've all been with us today. Thanks so much for DOP telling it like it is, Tammy. It's been a pleasure. Thank you all. And to our viewers out there, there's still more to see. Keep watching for important information you can't miss. DOP tell it. Ava thrombopag is indicated for treatment of thrombocytopenia in adult patients with chronic immune thrombocytopenia who have had an insufficient response to a previous treatment. Important safety information. Warnings and precautions. Thrombotic, thromboembolic complications. Doptelet is a thrombopoietin, or TPO receptor agonist, and TPO receptor agonist have been associated with thrombotic complications in 0.4% of doptelet-treated patients with chronic liver disease and thromboembolic complications in 7% of doptelet-treated patients with chronic immune thrombocytopenia. Portal vein thrombosis has been reported in patients with chronic liver disease, and arterial and venous thromboembolic events have been reported in patients with chronic immune thrombocytopenia that were treated with TPO receptor agonists. Consider the potential increased thrombotic risk when administering doptelet to patients with known risk factors for thromboembolism, including genetic prothrombotic conditions. Doptelet should not be administered to patients with chronic liver disease or chronic immune thrombocytopenia in an attempt to normalize platelet counts. Monitor platelet counts and for signs and symptoms of thromboembolic events and institute treatment promptly. Serious adverse reactions. The incidence of serious adverse reactions was 9% in the doptelet treated group versus 5% in the placebo treated group. Serious adverse reactions reported in more than one individual doptelet treated patient included headache, occurring in 1.6%. Adverse reactions. The most common adverse reactions, occurring in greater than or equal to 10% of patients with chronic immune thrombocytopenia, were headache, fatigue, contusion, epistaxis, upper respiratory tract infection, arthralgia, gingival bleeding, petechiae, and nasopharyngitis. Post-marketing experience. Following the approval of Doptelet, hypersensitivity reactions involving the immune system, including but not limited to pruritus, rash, choking sensation, swollen face, and swollen tongue have been reported. These are not all the possible risks associated with Doptelet. Please see full prescribing information for Doptelet at www.doptelethcp.com. To report suspected adverse reactions, contact Sobe North America at 1-866-773-5274 or FDA at 1-800-FDA-1088.